Hello, um, my name is Andreas Rogge um, and I'm doing a talk about being lazy because every good system administrator should be really, really lazy and if you're not lazy, um, you're probably not doing your job right. Um, it's all about configuration management. First, I'll introduce myself a bit. Um, I'm doing Linux for a living th since 2001. Um, started off with uh, Red Hat Linux, uh, moved over to Fedora, and um, finally uh, came to the CentOS project, where I'm a member of the uh, promotion team. Um, I use Puppet for configuration management since 2007, and um, since then I have much more free time. Yes, I do. <laughs> So, um, short overview, um, what we'll talk about today, I'm not going too much into technical detail, uh, it's just about getting an overview. So, why is configuration management useful? Um, a short market overview of what products are available currently, um, and then in-depth a view at Puppet, um, what terms are uh, used which is rather important to understand the theory of operation, um, <clears throat> how it works, what uh, components Puppet consists of, um, how you can extend it, and of course, what it can't do. Because every system has its limitations, and um, as such, Puppet has limitations too. Um, we'll have a short demonstration at the end, uh, where I will show you something um, which will hopefully be a bit interesting, <laughs> and let's start. So, um, what is configuration management? What do you think? Ideas? Managing your configuration. So, um, <laughs> what configuration can you manage? Actually, you can manage everything. You can manage IP configuration, you can manage um, DNS server configuration, you can manage um, web server configuration. Actually, everything you can do manually, you can also do automatically. Once you do it automatically, you don't have to care. So, the question is, why doesn't everybody use configuration management? The usual reasons are, um, I don't have spare time to learn how to use a new tool. Um, that's what I also said before we introduced Puppet. Um, actually, it was like, oh, I have to do configuration changes from 8 a.m. in the morning to 7 p.m. Um, <clears throat> and I don't have time to add a new tool. Um, <clears throat> one other thing which I often hear is our systems have nothing in common. Um, it's like, no, uh, every customer wants a different setup and um, we have to do it like this for that customer and like that for this other customer. And so they have nothing in common and we don't win anything from configuration management. Um, another thing is the software I've seen is far overly complex. That's um, what I also thought until I uh, found Puppet, because I had a look at CF Engine and I was like, how does anybody get this running? And um, last but not least, it's uh, the argument, it's always all or nothing and we cannot do everything right now. Um, because there are configuration management systems which, uh, need, or which force you to declare your whole configuration, your whole system and every detail. Nobody can do this unless you start to build your data center from scratch. Um, so usually you want to build um, <clears throat> small parts where you start to manage your configuration. Um, and with some systems or most old systems, that's not really possible. So the question is, aren't these bogus? Yes, for what I can say they are. If you don't have the spare time, to uh, introduce a configuration management system, you really need a configuration management system. 
even if you work over the weekend, um, you'll have more free time um, <clears throat> in the years after. Um, all servers have stuff in common. Um, if you have two servers in the same place, they at least share some IP configuration or stuff like that. And um, often that's enough to um, <clears throat> start with a, a configuration management system. Um, for the complexity, of course, every configuration management system is a bit complex. It doesn't work otherwise. But um, at least for Puppet, it's not that overly complex. Um, for that all or nothing part, um, Puppet is one of the systems where you can just manage one or two resources or just um, simple um, bits of your server and you don't have to, to declare a complete environment. So, um, why should you use configuration management? Um, there are other um, things to consider. Um, of course, you have less routine jobs. Um, you don't need the rack monkey who uh, configures your server, sets your IP configuration and stuff like that. Um, you can reproduce your system configurations. So if a server goes down and you need to do disaster recovery or something like that, you just set up a new server, run your configuration management system and have um, your <coughs> system set up like before. Um, you can standardize the system configuration, um, so you can make sure all your servers are configured the same. And you can not only do that in the moment when you do the setup, but you can also make sure every server gets every configuration change. You have somewhat automatic documentation, um, because by writing receipts for um, your configuration, you document what you would do manually. So actually, for Puppet, I feel that uh, the configuration receipt you write is the documentation for what you are configuring. And lastly, um, you got a simplified change management. If you check in your uh, configuration recipes into a source control system, you can then um, track changes um, later. And when somebody calls and says, OK, there's something broken, it's misconfigured. You know who it did, when he did it, and um, why stuff broke. Um, a short overview over the products that are currently available. Um, of course, uh, everyone knows it, your very own set of arcane, uh, arcane shell scripts. Um, probably everybody who regularly configures servers and does not use a configuration management product has some scripts they just run and um, <clears throat> hope that everything goes right. Um, then, of course, there is CF Engine, which is, um, from today's view, um, the dinosaur of open source configuration management. Um, very, very much legacy stuff. Um, to be honest, I haven't really looked at it because I found it too complex. Um, then there's uh, BCFG2. I think it's a German project. Um, they do m much with XML, and um, it is, I feel it is one of these products where you have to specify your whole environment. Your server from top to bottom, everything. Um, that's, that's great if it meets your expectation and um, you need that. But um, <clears throat> for what I can say, I don't like to um, program my systems using XML, and I also don't like to um, <clears throat> think about every little detail. Um, then, of course, there is Puppet, where we have a look at later. Um, there is a new project, which I got. Um, <clears throat> I first heard of it uh, this morning in the keynote. It's um, not really a fork, but um, some kind of fork from Puppet, um, which uses Ruby as a configuration language. Puppet itself uses its own domain-specific language, which I think is easier to learn and um, more tailored to the job of configuration management. Um, then there's Automated. Um, it also works 
we're uh, a bit like Puppet and Chef. Um, I haven't really looked at it, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> and probably there are much many more, especially um, commercial products in the market. Um, <clears throat> so Puppet is just one of your choices. If it doesn't fit you, you'll find another configuration management system that does. So who uses Puppet? There's uh, Sun and Oracle, um, Twitter, Rackspace, Google. Google actually does everything that's not Google production um, with uh, Puppet. They manage their Mac OS and Linux desktops completely with Puppet. Um, there's Fedora. The whole Fedora infrastructure is configured with Puppet. Um, there's Mozilla and there's Red Hat. Red Hat uh, currently transitions their um, infrastructure management to Puppet, at least according to the Puppet Wiki. So, um, getting a bit deeper into Puppet, we start with the terms. Um, <clears throat> we have um, facts, resources, resource types, um, providers, classes, notes, recipes, modules, and the catalog. Um, getting into detail, um, for configuration management, it's important to know what you're configuring. So you need information about the system that you configure. Um, <clears throat> a fact is nothing more than a small piece of information about a system, like the system's IP address, the system's host name, um, <clears throat> the system's domain name, the amount of memory installed, whatever. Um, everything you can script can be a fact. If you can write a script which does a single line output, it can be a fact. Um, <clears throat> as I already said, the facts help Puppet to decide how to configure your system. So um, the operating system type is a fact. The LSP distribution is a fact. The amount of memory installed is a fact. Everything that's a fact can be used to um, make Puppet decide what to do to that system. There are resources. Actually, everything you do in Puppet, you do with resources. Um, when you configure something, you usually touch a file or um, call a script or start, stop a service, whatever. Um, <clears throat> everything you do is bound to a resource. So you're declaring a resource that is a service, that, that service has a name, and that service should be running, for example. Um, <clears throat> what Puppet does is <clears throat> it looks what resources you declared for a host, and then makes sure that the resource is in the desired state. When you configure something, you usually <clears throat> need more than one resource. For a service, for example, you usually don't only uh, manage the service, but you may, um, must make sure that the uh, software package is installed, that the configuration files are right, and that the service is running. So there are different resource types. Um, that list is not exhaustive. Um, there are many, many, many resource types, and you can invent new ones if you want. Um, usual resource types are files, services, cruntab entries, users, groups, packages, and scripts. Um, with these few, you can manage almost everything you need for your day-to-day -day work. There are other more um, tailored um, resource types which can be used for more specific um, needs. Then there are providers. Um, when you have a resource type, for example a user, um, it really depends on the system you're on how to create and modify a user. Um, <clears throat> so you have a provider that does the realization of the resource. If you have a, a resource in a receipt and that shall be realized on a system, Puppet 
um, uses a provider to do the real work. Um, usually, that provider is chosen automatically. So, for example, for a package provider for um, Red Hat-based systems, it's automatically yum. For Debian system, it's automatically apt. For uh, Manriva, for example, it's URPME. So it always does the right thing automatically. If it doesn't, you can tell it which provider to use. Um, for that level of abstraction, it's required that every resource type has at least one provider. Um, most providers have more than one, for example, the package provider. Then you have classes, which are essentially um, grouping resources together. Um, <clears throat> you just use it, for example, if you um, define a class for a web server, um, you, would use, uh, you would add the resource for the web server package for your web server configuration files, the web server service um, into a class, and then you can use that as a group. Um, <clears throat> you can also use it to create roles. As I already said, um, a web server, for example, or a MySQL database server, um, you can just put the resources required together into a class and then use that class to apply a role to the system. Um, classes can use each other, so one class can say, I require that other class, and then it's uh, simply included. Um, and classes can be extended in an um, object-oriented um, manner. So you can say, I get a class, for example, backup, um, and I got different backup systems, and I got a specific class, which is a subclass of backup for every backup system. And so I can um, write the basic backup stuff, uh, which is the same for every system, into the main class, and then do the real implementation um, in the subclasses. Then there are nodes. <clears throat> if you manage a host, that host is a node. In Puppet, the term is, it's a managed node. Um, <clears throat> nodes essentially just work the same as classes. If you have a class and you uh, remove the class keyword and set a node keyword, you get a node. Um, <clears throat> usually, you um, use a node and add classes to it and do some settings and then it works. Um, you can also generate your nodes on the fly. Um, usually you just uh, describe them using the Puppet DSL, um, but you can, uh, for example, add a script that just gets the host name and then um, <clears throat> dumps out, I think it's YAML, um, that's then read and um, generates the node, for example, do, uh, using LDAP. So you have your nodes in LDAP and you add your settings in LDAP and you add the classes in LDAP and then <clears throat> Puppet can use that to configure your systems. Or maybe a database system or whatever. Um, lastly, there's a default node. Um, if you didn't configure your host, it will be configured according to the default node. That can be empty or you can add whatever you want there. Then there are recipes. Um, <clears throat> essentially, configuring with Puppet is just like writing a cookbook. Um, <clears throat> if you want to bake a cake, you need to know what ingredients you want. And for Puppet, it's you make a list of ingredients, which are the resources that you need to configure your system according to what you really want. And you need to declare dependencies to make sure um, the resources are executed or realized in the correct order. It doesn't help if you change a configuration file after you restart a service. Um, it's much better if you change the configuration file and then restart the service. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Essentially, that, <laughs> that sentence was made up before I learned about Chef. <laughs> yeah, Puppet is a rather smart chef. 
um, it figures out how to cook your server itself. Um, the obvious <laughs> the obvious dependencies, for example, if you declare a directory and you declare a file inside that directory, Puppet knows it has to do the directory first. <laughs> um, then there are, mod uh, there are modules. Um, usually you have a set of receipts and um, files and other stuff like extensions, which are a building block. And with modules, you can produce such building blocks. Um, <clears throat> these can be shared with others. So um, you can easily you, uh, take a module and move it to another configuration management server or to a whole different site. It is usually, if you don't rely on too many external dependencies, um, it's usually exchangeable. Um, you cannot only put recipes in, uh, inside a module, but also files, because you always need, or not always, but often need to distribute files to um, <coughs> your servers. Templates, which are essentially just uh, files with variables in it that get replaced. And um, puppet extensions, which means new facts, new providers, new resource types, um, new functions, whatever. Um, oh, there should be a slide about the catalog. Um, <laughs> the catalog um, is nothing more than the compiled configuration that's moved to the managed node. Um, <clears throat> we'll see that right now. The theory of operation in Puppet is rather simple. Um, you got a client, which is the managed node, um, that collects its facts and sends these over to the server. The server has a look at the facts and um, the receipts and determines what uh, node he's configuring um, based on the host name um, and then compiles a complete configuration with uh, every resource that's configured for the host. That is the catalog, which is then sent back to the client which then applies the configuration, um, usually by calling providers for the, um, <clears throat> for the resources you declared in the correct order, which is um, found out by a dependency tree, because you can um, specify dependencies in your receipts, which then make sure that um, one resource is done before another resource. Lastly, um, that's the optional part. Um, the client can send a report to the server um, that you can then handle and find out whether everything worked or what was changed, whether anything was changed, um, or you can just ignore it. <laughs> Um, Puppet itself is um, working with a set of components. The first one is uh, Factor, the Puppet Master, the Puppet D, um, the Puppet Command Line Tool, and um, some arcane tool called Ralsh. First of all, Factor, I already said, is a simple tool. Um, it's the component that does the fact collection, and it's not tied to uh, Puppet, so you can use it for your own project um, or just uh, call it from a shell script, for example, to uh, find out the current host name or uh, determine the free system memory, um, find out the SSH host key or whatever you want. Then there's the Puppet Master, that's the server component, which runs on your central um, configuration management server that's where you have your modules, recipes, whatever. Um, that's also the component that does the compilation for your managed nodes. And um, 
as it compiles the configuration, you don't distribute all information about every node to every managed node, but the Puppet Master only sends um, that information to a node that this node needs to know. Um, it has an integrated file server to distribute files and extensions, while distributing extensions actually means it distributes files. Um, as I already said, it's the only component in Puppet that knows everything. So the Puppet Master knows every host, but the hosts don't have to know each other. Um, it can also store the configuration to a database system, which is a nice part because then you can um, do data mining on your uh, database, for example, to find out um, what host has a specific fact, um, but that doesn't have to do very much with Puppet itself. Um, you can use it for um, exporting resources. So, um, for example, if you have a file on one host and you need that file on another host, um, you can mark it that it is exported and then the other host can um, get that um, resource from the database. Um, rather advanced, so maybe we'll see that later. Um, then there's the Puppet D, that's um, the software that runs on the managed node and regularly questions the Puppet Master for the system's configuration. Um, <clears throat> more or less it's just a daemon that wakes up ab around every 30 minutes, collects every, uh, all facts um, <clears throat> and then sends these to the Puppet Master, um, gets the catalog with the configuration back and then applies that configuration onto the managed node. There's also a command line tool called Puppet, um, which is more or less just Puppet D and Puppet Master integrated. Um, you can just run your receipt um, <clears throat> locally by just calling it. Um, it's great for testing receipts. Um, for example, we use it uh, in an SVN commit hook, so we make sure that you cannot commit um, syntactically invalid um, Puppet receipts. Um, it's a really good way to try Puppet, because you don't have to deploy the whole client-server stuff, but you can just write a receipt, um, call it with a Puppet um, command line tool and uh, see what happens. Also, it's an option if you're unhappy with your current um, configuration management tool um, because that can just call scripts. We had that at a customer site. They had a strategic decision for a specific tool which essentially just uh, ran these arcane scripts I was talking about earlier and uh, we decided to replace these arcane scripts with uh, Puppet scripts. Lastly, there's uh, Ralsh. It's for the um, really lazy people. If you don't want to define your resources yourself because you, are, uh, you don't want to write uh, like three or four lines of code, you can um, <clears throat> just tell it what on the current system you want as a receipt and then it will dump it. So if you have a user that's already configured, you can tell it, okay, please generate the receipt for that user. Then you can cut and paste it, and there you go. Um, Puppet is rather easily extended. Um, extensions are written in Ruby. Um, Puppet itself is completely written in Ruby. Um, it doesn't require a recent Ruby release, but it requires Ruby. Um, these extensions are usually automatically deployed to the managed nodes if they are required there. For example, if you um, add a fact, that fact will be pushed to all managed nodes and on the next configuration run, um, that fact will be evaluated by the um, Puppet D and sent to the Puppet Master. Um, you can add new facts, new resource types, 
new providers and new functions. Um, functions are for the big picture um, an implementation detail. Um, when you write a receipt, you can use a function um, to, yeah, for whatever you use a function. For example, to um, change a variable or to um, <coughs> evaluate a value or whatever you can think of. So I also said at uh, talk about limitations. So the question is, was, what is Puppet not? Um, Puppet does not do system installations. Um, it's just a configuration management tool. So you still have to have a deployment solution, for example, um, Cobbler or um, Spacewalk or whatever. Um, it does not really monitor your systems um, as some other solutions do. And it doesn't really do an inventory. Um, you can use the data you get from Factor um, to get an overview over your machines, but it's not definitely not an inventory solution. Um, there's also a weak spot. <clears throat> that is, when you remove a resource, um, that resource will not get removed, but it will just be unmanaged. That makes it rather hard to, um, for example, remove the database server role from a system, um, because when you just remove the class, everything will stay in place, but it will, be, uh, it will not be managed anymore. So if you want to unconfigure systems, you have to um, write recipes that um, actually do that. Conclusion. Um, <clears throat> I think that Puppet is a good system to um, manage parts of hosts. So you don't have to manage the complete host. You can just manage um, like a web server part or um, something simple like uh, NTPD or something like that. Um, but you can also manage a complete host. The Overall concept, um, I think, works quite well and is rather simple because you ha just have one or two calls to um, <coughs> generate a configuration. And um, for the average user who just write, writes recipes, uh, you don't need any Ruby skills or something like that. So um, you can work with it with uh, different administrators together with uh, different skill levels um, without a problem. So um, <clears throat> I'm giving a demonstration um, on what Puppet can do and we'll see it in action. Any specific request, what you want to see? <laughs> yes, please? Show the, uh, when you do your demo, can you show the construct of all the components? The what? When you do your demo, can you show a construct of all the components? Kind of going through that? I'll try. You, you, you just get a sense of what the different yeah. definitions Yeah. I can only uh, demonstrate with uh, <clears throat> the command line. Um, because I don't have a complete client server set up here. Um, Better? Yeah. Still better or too big? <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll start off with a simple thing, which is um, just 
configuring NTP. So the question is, what do I have to do for NTP? Um, first thing is, I think I need to install the package. It's called NTP. And I want to ensure that it's installed. Let's see. Thanks. Nothing happened. But that's just because NTP is already installed. Yeah, that's um, the part with a um, <clears throat> um, with the providers. Um, I'll just go back to that. Yes, there. Um, the provider itself does the realization of the resource. So um, you get a package provider for every major package manager. For example, there's a package provider for RPM, there's a package provider for DPKG, there's a package provider for GEMS, um, and there's one for YUM and whatever. After all, it's uh, more or less just Ruby code that knows how to call the systems package manager. Um, the decision which package manager to use is based on the facts. So I'll uh, show you the facts and then um, <clears throat> we'll see. We can also have a deeper look into Puppet if you really want. Um, I think I should pipe that somewhere. Um, there you see a set of facts, for example, the architecture, the factor version, um, and especially stuff like the LSB dist ID, which is there. Um, and based on that fact, Puppet um, knows, uh, not, not really Puppet, but the, the um, package provider for YUM knows, okay, that's CentOS, I know that system, and um, I'm usually the default provider. And so as I didn't tell Puppet to use a different provider, it uses the default provider. When I um, change this, I can say, okay, I want the provider to be RPM. It will still do nothing. Um, if the package was not installed, um, it would bail out because RPM does not have a download mechanism. Um, that's what I need YUM for. Uh, yes, with RPM you can tell it uh, custom location. Um, I'm not really sure because we usually use uh, YUM, not RPM, as a provider. Um, I'm not sure whether it will uh, download, uh, whether Puppet will download the package or will just um, give the string to our. file harder once you have like two packages <laughs> um, so what do we need for NTP um, <clears throat> NTP is a service and we should sh make sure that it's running oh wait I show Rolsch so, Rolsch, 
service and TPD. Just cut, paste, ah, okay. Nope. <laughs> Now we also have declared the service. Um, <coughs> what we don't have yet is a dependency. Because I know I cannot start the service unless the package is installed. I just say require package NTP. That makes sure that the start of the service is deferred until the package was successfully installed or it was found out that the package is already installed. Um, what we also need is a configuration file, I think. Yep. We just do the very simple variant. Just removing the comments so you see there's actually a change happening. Um, so, I have a file that shall be etcntp.conf and its source is that. Usually for a client server setup it would be something like puppet module ntp ntp.conf which is nothing more than this is a puppet URL so ask the puppet server I don't specify a host so use the host you got the receipt for, uh, you got the catalog from module is uh, the magic um, module directory, um, ntp is the module name, and ntp.conf is uh, the file name with path from inside the ntp module. Um, as we don't do client server, we can't do that right now. Um, it should have an owner, that's root, and a group, that's also root, and a mode. Um, ah, yeah, and we shouldn't do that before the package is installed. However, if we change that file, we should restart the service, so we should tell it. So we notify the service NTPD. Actually, that also depends on the file because it doesn't make sense to start the service, um, then change the file and then restart the service. So, file etcntp.conf. So, when I now run this and I didn't break anything. It says okay. Um, the file is replaced with that other uh, this file, um, and as I replaced it, the service said, <coughs> "I'm triggering a refresh." So actually, NTPD restarted because the change of the configuration file. Um, yes? Um, yes. 
you can um, you can declare a file bucket, um, which is nothing more than um, a place on a, a puppet master where everything that a client replaces is uploaded to. So you get an, uh, a copy of the file that was replaced back up on the puppet master. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. If you want to undo, you have to do it manually. No, there's. Um, yes. Um, if the service fails to start, um, <coughs> you get an um, <coughs> information in the log file and um, the report that's uh, sent out would uh, show that your, uh, the, the service resource um, could not be um, realized as it should. In what case? Yeah. Ah, the Oh, that's uh, from the dependency ordering. Um, it does the configuration file first and then tries to restart the service. Um, as, it's not, uh, as it doesn't work transactional, um, it does replace the configuration file, which is successful, then tries to restart the service, that fails. So the configuration file is replaced. Sorry? The file is left broken. Yes, the file is left broken. Um, that is um, up to you to make sure you don't break your configuration files. That's something that probably never changes. You probably could do that, but um, the practical solution is do not break your configuration uh, files. <laughs> okay. Oh, five minutes. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. Um, five minutes. Five minutes means um, questions and answers. Any more questions? Okay. Yeah, um, that, that um, depends. The, you get um, an execute resource. Um, I can show that it's... That's uh, one variant. Um, you have a script that's ex uh, ex or, or a command that's executed, which is in this case touch slash demo slash foo, um, which creates, uh, yeah, creates, not created, which creates a slash demo slash foo. Um, when I call that, It executes that and touches the file. When I execute it again, it doesn't do anything because the file is already there. That's one variant. There's also another one. You can say refresh only. True. Which makes this just do nothing unless I get some uh, some other resource like nah.
Um, so what that does, as you see, it's both executed um, because the first one did send a notify to the refresh only script that is only executed when it um, receives a notify. There are the two variants to um, realize that, that. Yes. So on the on the funk question, um, funk is more about managing machines once you've configured them. Yes. Yes. Um, and Puppet Labs have just acquired a project called M Connector, uh, which sits in that space to 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 do that. So there was a question over there. Ah, that's uh, that's rather simple. Um, it's all um, using HTTPS, so um, the communication itself is uh, safe. The uh, Puppet D author uh, is authorized by the Puppet Master um, because the Puppet Master um, has a certificate and the Puppet D has also a certificate, um, and the Puppet Master's host name uh, must be configured. Yeah, by default, it just uses Puppet, yes. Yes? The package name is different. Ah, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if you have different platforms, you can learn to use VI. <laughs> yes? Um, if I have, for example, um, somebody knows it, is it name? I think it's name. Um, I could also write it like this, um, because the default for name is just the name of the resource in case of package. Um, but I could also uh, do something like this. Um, which says evaluate that variable, which I get because it's a fact. Let's have a look. CentOS. In case it's CentOS. Uh, <sighs> Short syntax help. Somebody used to puppet. <laughs> Didn't do this for ages. <laughs> um, I think it's like it's arrows. It's ah yes 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 yes. It's like this, and it's default for the default. After the brace, yes, of course. Sorry. So, no, wrong one. And you see it still works. Um. <laughs> Yeah, no output. No news is good news. Um, so if I had a Debian system, I think it's XNTPD and just pretend, pretend it was that. And I execute it, it should fail. It doesn't fail that fast because it doesn't. It's correct. It's correct. Why? It's correct. It's not DPS. Because it's correct. Ah, but NTPD uses DPD. Default is correct. The package is called NTPD. Yeah. Well, there is a package called NTPD. But it's not installed. Oh, so there are two packages that end both NTP and D? Um, <laughs> that's a good switch. <laughs> Yes? I 
things about it? Check concept. So it doesn't search for a package, it searches for a service. Obviously, something just went wrong. But what? What? Time's up. <laughs> it's, it's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, we also use it for virtual machines. Um, Essentially, we just use it for all machines, no matter whether they are virtual, physical, or whatever. Is it a good idea to use the certificates also for other applications or integrations? I don't know if it's a good idea, but uh, we do it. <laughs> Thank you.